Play. Hey everyone, welcome back to another exciting episode of Attack on Protection. Today, I'm being joined again once by, once again by Jake, as I repeat this for the third time. We've been trying hard, but hello y'all, it's me again. So I, I understand, COVID's a thing, people are, I guess, making their own things over Discord, and the bot we're using is just being overloaded, and if you know any other good uh, recording Discord app uh, bots besides Craig, please let us know, because the only one I could come across was one called Pawa, which only had two reviews on it, and I don't know if I want to risk that, so if you tried Pawa, let us know, but getting into the duel, so this is the first round of our locals this past weekend, where I was playing against Fluff using the Lord Slug uh, profile I had uh, built, I had made, the profile did drop on Saturday, so check that out if you haven't already, which is a very fun yellow-green variant, versus Fluff's U9 Gotenks deck profile, and the reason why I have Jake here today is because Jake actually had some help in making this deck. Yeah, Fluff couldn't be with us today, but since I helped Fluff put this list together, we figured I'd be an acceptable stand-in. And, yeah, this was an interesting duel, uh, because I've seen this deck go before, and I knew if I could not get aboard fast enough, he was going to beat me, I think, by turn four is what he typically goes off on, right? Uh, three or four. Three or it's four. basically a uh, swarm race. It's, this match really boiled down to who could deny the opponent more resources while building their own board or own pressure the fastest. Yeah. So, I uh, start your basic turn off charging. In this case, it doesn't really matter anymore what color you charge, either yellow or green, because Slug has so many different, uh, so many ways to playing Wings or the one-drop Slug. Um, I do play a Demigraw as my unison in this deck as well, but I chose to charge Yellow Energy to use the three-drop Solar Slug, uh, activate main to discard it to play a one-drop for my deck, and I went with Wings, which is by far the best Slug army card you get on the board as soon as possible. And it uh, looks like Fluff responds with a Crit Krillin and swings with his own leader so he can uh, dig into his own life total and keep you from critting it away from him. It's always nice to get crit back when you're playing a slug deck. Gotta fight fire with fire, bud. No, for sure, for sure. So, what I like about slug is the self-awakening part, because I can get to awaken as soon as possible, and typically I like going on awakening by turn four. I don't think there was a time where I did not awaken by turn no, I stand corrected. I waked in a turn one against someone else, but we'll go into that later. Um, yeah. That was an awesome uh, duel, let's put it that way. But I took the life, I awakened, so I draw. Th I, I drew three cards just then, which is pretty nice. Um, I don't know if I swank, swank, wow, if I, yeah, I did, okay. So I maximized all my draws, got four draws out, out of the way this turn, going to the Krillin, because I don't like getting hit with crit. And what's important to remember here is you spent all of your, uh, or you got all of your draws before you spent any energy, which let you uh, act the rest of your turn on complete information. Yeah. And this turn was practically used to build the field. I pay one green energy to play the two drop Lord Slug, um, return to form. Is that, what, is that what it is, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Lord Slug Return for. Which allows me to go through my deck for a Lord Slug's Army card, energy cost of four or less. I always go for the four drop because that's typically my turn three or turn four play, depending on what I have in hand. And it's such a, it's a great card. I mean, with wings on the board, it's three energy. Um, you play a three drop from your drop, and then you uh, resend one, one energy. So... And it looks like you pitch another three drop yellow slug here to go get your one drop yellow slug, yep. which uh, will further extend your hand advantage and set you up for further future turns. And here I was telling Fluff to go ahead and draw his cards. So he went to go draw, and he's like, wait, what do you mean? I'm like, oh, I'm playing two assimilates. <laughs> he was like, are you ending your turn or are you activating an extra card? Yeah. So, and with assimilate, there's so many different options you can grab now, which is awesome. And I need to, I guess, mention real quick, in the profile that I did for this past Saturday, I had mentioned for some reason that you could pull the blocker. That No, you can't. I don't know why I said that, 
Um, maybe because it was there and I said the word free prior to me showing off Assimilate. But it has to be a Lord, uh, it has to be a, a Manekian battle card that's either yellow or green of energy cost two or less. So I go for super combos for protection. Yeah, it, it's a no brainer include in this deck that's chock full of Namekian targets. Yeah. So Fluff looks a little bit unsure about what to do here. I mean, you just boarded a lot of pressure for uh, relatively cheaply. And uh, even though the Go Tanks list has things like Flying Nimbus, it's not exactly built to survive an extended assault. That's really the game it wants to be imposing on its opponent. Yeah. And, uh,. Looks like Fluff is going to opt to play the, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he's going to go into a U9 Assemble here. Yeah. Let's see. Yep, pays both. Yep, U9 Assemble. Let's him draw two and board a uh, U9 from deck for free. Uh, it's a good way for him to try and crack back at your play from deck pressure. And he goes to get Row, which will let him tap down one of your battle cards and hopefully clear it from the board with his own attacks. And of the two he can target it, the one he's going for, obviously, is the one-drop slug. Uh, that's a good target, and I feel like there's a case to be made for wings as well. It just depends on what he's more afraid of well, on your next turn. Here's the problem. Ro does not ignore barrier. Oh, true. True. So, yeah, wings is very sticky. <laughs> so I comboed off an extra wings I had in my hand. He swings uh, into the one-drop slug, makes it a 15k... If correct, I super combo, and then I go ahead and combo off the two drop from the field. Uh, well, why did you opt to combo from the field rather than use the other super combo you grabbed? I only need to do an extra 5k. It needed to be 20, and if I did two super combos, I would have wasted the second super combo. I'm just afraid of a little bit of overkill. Oh, yeah. You always got to be careful with that. So here, I use the yellow energy to activate main on the one-drop slug to play the three-drop agent destruction to the field. And now I have the ability, once per turn, <clears throat> sorry, while this card's on the field, to use its effect for, for one green energy to play a three-drop from my hand That um, as long as it's not the same card. So in this case, I play the three-drop Angela. And with the last... And go on. Both, I was going to say, with both Slug and Angela, you'll be able to poke at your opponent's hand, which goes back to what we spoke to earlier, how yeah. this game is a mix of denying your opponent resources while swarming your own board. And so I opt to swing Leader into Row because I want it to clear the board without hurting his, uh, without giving him resources, resources to his life. So he went ahead and tapped the, uh, the three drop, and I'm like, well... It is what it is. He would have tapped my leader then if I used anyone else. Yeah, that was an excellent pick, though, with his super combo. Oh, for sure. And here, I can't remember if I decide to swing with uh, Demigra or not. Because I'm like, he's going to get it regardless when he awake on his next turn. Do I, I, think if, I think if you swing with Demigra, you inadvertently give him some extra options about when he spends his energy. Oh, yeah. Looks I, like I don't. Passed. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the correct call. Which forces him to have to do things a different route. Yeah. Just play a little bit more uh, with a few more restrictions than yeah. he would if he had gone into the turn for life free and clear. So he's playing two energy. If correct, he's going for the unison now. Now, yeah. I will say, this is the card that Fluff will be changing out. He's going to put in the old school Vegeta Unison in, instead. So after testing, uh, we feel like the uh, Vegeta Unison, or at least Fluff feels like the Vegeta Unison will work better. Uh, we thought that the U9 that Bergamo goes and gets from deck is played in active mode, and it's not. Correct. And really, the point of this deck was to swarm the board and apply pressure, and if those U9s are coming out in rest mode, that really doesn't do the job we want it to. Yeah. And uh, there's just better unisons to play in this list, that being the case. Now here he's targeting my unison. He's trying to get it below two markers because he knows there's a chance I have a counterplay in my hand. So he leaves it at, 
he doesn't awaken. And he just leaves it at, I guess, to, I can't remember if he gets a 5k boost or not, top of my head or not. No, no just 10. But I go ahead and use the uh, permanent effect to take a life instead. Which is generally what uh, Demigra will do when pressured. Yeah. At least initially. He's debating on what to play. I see a couple of good cards in his hand that I was not aware he had. Huh. It just comes down to how much is already on the board. Yeah. And does he think he can kill you, or uh, is he going to opt to clear the board? Yeah. So here, I I was like, you, you do know it's rest mode, right, man? He's like, what? And he went to go look at it again. So. And <laughs> his comment was like, well, this deck sucks. <laughs> I don't think yeah. it's bad. I just think the fact that he he thought it would be uh, an active. Yeah, I think with that knowledge, this deck is better uh, played in more of a control variant, which is how we initially, or which is how Fluff initially built the deck. Yeah, and that's why he's going with the Vegeta route mainly because the Vegeta will allow um, your opponent, not to, like Gotenks, for example won't be able to play the fire drop and immediately be able to swing with it. Yeah, they'll have to sit back for a while. Yeah, so he's going to try and definitely take out my uh, my crit over there. It's a problem card. Yeah, it's there's just a lot of uh, abilities on that Agent of Destruction. Or yeah. is he swinging at the uh, Angela? He's swinging at the Angela. Yeah, either it, one. So... Um, mainly, yeah, sorry. Don't sure what happened there. But mainly because the, uh, it loses one from hand and it's crit. It's a dangerous card. But if you recall correctly, on turn t uh, two, yeah, I pulled a four drop slug in my hand, which allows me to play a three or less Lord Slug, uh, sorry, Slug's army card from my drop to the field. Yeah, so maybe an exercise in futility attempting to clear the board here, looking on it. Uh, retroactively. Yeah. But looking at Fluff's hand, it does look like he has a few defensive options, so he could survive a little bit deeper into this game and maybe even surmount a crack back. So here I go ahead and do the plus one for Demigra, get it to three. Now I know he wanted it down on markers, now he has to work harder just to get it down. I'm getting the energy set up kind of about to play the four drop, kind of like putting where I want to and just kind of doing the whole double track. Is this what I want to do? Looking through my life to, to figure out, would the three drop Angelus be a better option? Or would the yellow slug army be, uh, sorry, Lord Slug be a better option? Because like, for example, the Unison, if he were to play it, could he still play it? Right, right. And uh, I, think, I think you made the right call. So using... Um, Agent Destruction Slug, I paid one green to play the three drop yellow and went ahead and uh, swing with it because, as part of its effect, he has to select two cards that he cannot untap next turn. And this is me just kind of re uh, verifying that and just going over it. And if correct, he selects his two battle cards. Which is obviously the, the play. You, you need as much energy as you can if yeah. you're going to win this game. So he's super comboing there. I swing into his battle cards because his hand's getting pretty low. I know he needs cards in his hand. So I'm, just, I'm opting out on uh, applying resources to that. So I assimilate for another super combo. So now I have another one in my hand. Yeah, just very powerful being able yeah. to go search up those super combos. And I think that's a, that's a pass. Yeah. Yeah, the Nimbus really keeps you yeah. from doing too much else this turn. But I got rid of his a card that that he could use to tap against because he probably would have tapped. I I can only assume he would have swung into the three drop Angelus, the green one, and then tapped my slug and tried to go after that one. So I can't constantly bring cards out. I think in a perfect world, Fluff wants to fuse into the uh, the. Go the seven drop go tanks from here yeah. 
and pop your Angela on the, the far left there. Yes. To keep it from keeping your stuff in rest and maybe try and push on those last three life. I think at this stage in the game, if he keeps fighting the attrition war with battle cards, he'll lose for sure. I think the problem is that he was not seeing one of his pieces, I think. That's unfortunate. Yeah. The Vegeta unison will help with that too, because it'll extend the game and uh, allow him extra time to draw into his fusion pieces. Yeah. So, I unfortunately, like, like you said earlier, he could not join us for this call today, and I, I wanted to ask him. I, mean, I kind of get the idea of why, but I wanted to ask. He forgot to draw off his leader, but um, why he did this next play. He's targeting the Angelus. He, he wants to get rid of it. And I'm like, uh, which one again? <laughs> so he combos up a little bit. I super combo to protect it. Yeah, it's a it's a powerful card. And now, once again, he has four cards in rest. So on my next turn, I can swing with it again. And it, its effect goes into play. I think there's just so much going on on the table in this game. It's hard for your opponent to keep track of what's on the table and what's in your hand, especially when you're going and searching things up and playing things from the drop area. Yeah. It's hard to keep a mental track of which cards are in your hand and where. I think if he remembered you went and grabbed a super combo at the end of your last turn, he probably wouldn't have made that play. Yeah. It's a possibility. I mean, sometimes you, what was it? What's the phrase? You don't miss any. Something about, if you don't take the shots, you don't miss. Or I don't know. I can't remember what it is. This you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. Yeah, that's true. And on my field, outside the, the crits, that is probably the most powerful card against him. But here is why I wanted to ask him about so badly. I know he has the gates in his hand. I see a couple of final flashes in his hand. Why did he opt out on trying to get as much cards in his hand? I get he's trying to set up for next turn. Um, but it's just a very dangerous situation now because he has nothing to negate with. Now, I know he has time magics, but that's going to take from his life. Yeah, um, I'm not sure. I think maybe... Hmm. Oh, I know the first pulls. Okay, I remember asking. He mentioned in the duel. I'm remembering it now, actually. Sorry. The first set of draws he was doing, he was trying to hope to get a flying Nimbus. He didn't see it. So he wanted to get as much resources in his hand that he could potentially use, is what it was. And that's why he got rid of the final flash to bring the Goten back to his hand so he had an extra card to combo with. Yeah. If you're going to tap up on energy, it's smart to change out something with no combo power for even just 5k more. But here, the way Slug works, I pay one energy for the two drop again. I bring the four drop in my hand. I'm doing everything I possibly can before I even swing because I'll tap to tap a card. So here we go. Boom. Play that card. I dig another card out from my grave. I think this time I played the three drop Lord Slug. Yeah. And just the. the there's not room on the play mat for the number of cards on the field. Yeah. Um, I think I turn around and use Agent Destruction effect as well. Body and Nutter. I mean, it's. Yep. It slugs once nasty. You your, yeah, once you get your board set up, uh, even red is going to have a difficult time keeping your number of battle cards low. And. This kind of goes without saying, but at this point, you could go into Cell X and probably have some stuff left over. Yeah. And I will say that uh, you mentioned red. My second round, I did go up against a uh, red deck, and I managed to be able to beat them. Now, he did I've... clear my board, but I just was able to get enough stuff into my hand with all those extra draws of all the assimilates to get the right cards in my hand to out combo him in the end, which allowed me to win. I believe the opponent's quote in that game was 5K. <laughs> he beat me by 5 effing K. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think I was asking Jimmy. I, because we haven't got an actual rolling. We, we haven't found the rolling. Jimmy's asked the judge people, uh, the, the group he's part of, about the whole, if 
a card states you need to draw as part of the Yudabatara. Can you still play that card if you ha if you cannot draw? We cannot find an official ruling. If anyone out there who is watching this knows where an official ruling that where that's been brought up, put it uh, link it down below. <laughs> is is uh is yellow slugs ability permanent or auto? While it's in rest mode, your opponent cannot draw cards. Um, or cannot add cards from their deck to their hand outside of leader effect. Hmm. So. I don't know. Like so everything, when... everything I would know about the game would say yes. It would prevent you from fusing. Yeah. But that seems a bit restrictive. So, so I think that's to be determined. Someone had mentioned it in the comment before. And that's I mean, they asked me, hey, Jimmy, uh, this came up in one of our comments. Uh, keep looking into it. And he sent out you know, the question. Has not really got a, an official response yet. So like I said, if anyone had, has asked this before, this has come up in a conversation before, um, or know where I could look this up real quick, let me know. That's it. That was uh, Slug versus U9 Gotenks. Um I, Fluff told me he wanted me to say something, but I can't remember what it was. Maybe he was an idiot. I don't exactly remember the right wording. Maybe he'll comment in the video afterwards. But, D Jake, thanks for tuning in. Uh, sorry, sorry, thanks for joining. Wow. No problem, man. Uh, <laughs> it's a blast as always, and uh, I'm glad that I was able to somewhat stand in for Fluff this episode. Yeah. Like I said, you helped him build it. He felt like you were the best option for that, so. Well, I'm honored. With that being said, Jake, any last words? Uh, I guess I have to say, read your cards, know your plays, right? I mean, if you want to close it out, go right ahead. No, I mean, that's just what Fluff would say in this situation, I feel like. Okay, so, um, practice. All right, now it's your turn. <laughs> All right, uh, read your cards, know your plays, and uh, Fluff out. And like always, Fluff out. Ah, uh, God dang <laughs>